Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal from the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Is the United States actually ushering in the end of the U.S. dollar? Well, actually, I saw a video presentation by a man by the name of Porter Stansbury, where basically he says that it is. He basically says because of things such as increasing debt and uh, House Resolution 2847, that this is going to usher in a total collapse or a true collapse of the United States dollar. He says this is going to make Americans poorer overnight. Years ago, I used to get his newsletter uh, for a short time. Uh, one of the reasons I quit getting is, one, I'm really not an investor, and secondly, which is what his focus was, and secondly, he had said certain things were going to happen to Europe, and he ended up being wrong. But it doesn't mean that everything he had to say was wrong. I'd like to read some things from a presentation that he has on the Internet. The presentation itself is about an hour and a half or two hours. I only listened to the first hour and ten minutes or so, and then I read this, the transcript. So I'd read some of it, what he's claiming. Life as we know it, for more than 40 years, will essentially cease to exist. Our governments on both the federal and state level will shut down. And he's talking about the U.S. government. Banks will not open. Businesses will be at least temporarily shuttering their doors. I expect we'll see martial law enforce the United States. I believe that we as Americans are about to see a major, major collapse in our national monetary system and our normal way of life. Basically, for so many years, our government has been borrowing so much money that very soon we'll no longer be able to afford even the interest on these loans. As far as some of the problems with the debt, one thing that's been going on is the United States uh, Federal Reserve has been engaged in a program called quantitative easing, where basically it basically involves in counterfeiting money. And this chart, which is actually from Porter Stansbury's presentation, this particular chart basically uh, shows people that uh, how rapidly the Federal Reserve debt has gone up. But it's not just the Federal Reserve. Also, I'd like to show another chart that he showed. This is of the total U.S. government debt. The total debt of the United States government has gone up dramatically. Look at this, this chart. See how high it's gone up. And it's gone up so much that the United States has decided that it's going to actually suspend its debt ceiling because it keeps going up and up and up, and the debt continues to increase. How fast is the debt increasing? Well, according to Porter Stansbury, for many years now, every single hour of every single day, the United States government spends about $200 million that it does not have. So that's uh, nearly a dollar for every person there has, or let's say, let's say 60, 70 cents an hour for every single American the United States government is spending when it does not have. If you live in the United States, what you do not realize is that your lifestyle is being subsidized by debt to that degree all the time. Now, Porter Stansbury says, we're trapped, there's no way out. Well, repentance or national repentance would be a way out. The United States has shown no inclination to do that. Instead of repenting from uh, its sins, we see the United States more and more going away from biblical morality, accepting uh, perverse ideas of marriage, accepting uh, uh, pornography uh, publicly, etc. Uh, the abortion rate, rate keeps going on. Abortions continue. Even the rate fluctuates sometimes. These things keep happening, and the United States has not shown signs of repentance, and it keeps borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. One thing he says that's correct about the United States is that the United States has a unique ability to print more money. Uh, the government has is the only debtor in the world to get away with this because it's the world's reserve currency. Then he talks about the fact that this will not continue. He says that for the longest time, for 150 years or nearly 200 years, Britain was had the world's reserve currency. And actually one of the first, if not the first, reserve currency outside the old Roman Empire, if you will, was probably the British pound sterling. And he said that uh, Britain sterling was a reserve currency for most of the world for nearly 200 years, most of the 18th and 19th centuries. He says he even continued to play this role up until around World War II, when uh, the United States was forced to prop it up. Then they implemented what he called the socialist agenda. Debt went up, things got bad. They had their winter of discontent in the late 1970s. In 1975, they had 26.5% inflation rate in just one year. They tried something called a three-day week over there, which limited uh, electricity. 
uh, television broadcasts, etc. Why do we talk about that? Because Britain was on top of the world, in a sense, for longer than the United States, and Britain no longer is. It's kind of claim to fame at this instant, if you will, is that it's still a very close military ally with the United States, but as far as being considered a true leader of the world, it's considered an important country, but nah, not, not that important anymore. People may think it couldn't happen to the United States, but it can. It also happened to Rome. One th point that he brought out was about our creditors. I'm going to read his words because they're similar to things that I've been warning about for at least five years. It actually is closer to, to ten. But in writing, I know I've done it for at least five. And this is what he wrote. This is Porter Stansbury. I believe our creditors, which include foreign countries and other investors here and abroad, will either completely stop accepting dollars in repayment or greatly discount the value of these new dollars. I'm sure this sounds crazy, but I'll show you that's already beginning to happen. He says, in fact, Jia Jiogang, a researcher in the Shanghai Institute for International Studies, recently said, quote, the shortcomings of the international monetary system pose a big threat to China's economy. Then Porter Stansbury continues, that's why China is now actively taking steps to phase out of the U.S. dollar because its frustration with the U.S. government's mismanagement of our currency. And how does the government respond, our government respond? We call China a currency manipulator. And what he's saying is by programs such as quantitative easing from the U.S. Federal Reserve, deficit spending from the United States uh, federal government, that this is actually causing a mismanagement of the U.S. economy. And as far as foreigners go, I'd like you to turn to your Bibles, if you have it, Go to Habakkuk chapter 2. I'm going to read something starting in verse 3. Habakkuk 2, starting in verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So we read here that this is an end-time vision. It's one for the appointed time of the end. While there may have been some prior fulfillments, the future fulfillment for the time of the end is prophesied here by Habakkuk. Now let's continue down in verse 5. Indeed, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. Verse 6. Will not all these take up the proverb against him, and a taunting riddle against him, and say, Woe to him who increases what is not his. How long? And to him who loads pledges himself with himself. Will not your creditors rise up suddenly? Will not they awaken who oppress you, and you will become their booty? Because you plundered many nations, all the remnant of the people will plunder you. Now, Porter Stansbury was not quoting the Bible. That the Bible warns the time that foreign creditors are going to rise up. And that's what he says is going to happen. He continues. He says, as a result of what our government is doing, I'm confident we'll soon see an end to the U.S. dollar standard. In fact, I'm 100% sure of it. It's not a matter of if, but when. And I think it's going to happen much, much sooner than most people think. And he explains that because the United States economy has been subsidized by foreign creditors, that Americans are doing better, or we appear to be doing better financially or on the world scene than, than we truly are. He furthermore says he believes a series of new laws set to go into effect uh, July 1st of 2014 are going to accelerate this in a very dramatic fashion. And he says this is going to usher in the end of U.S. dollar dominance. Now this particular law, which he's talking about, is called FACTA. This is House Resolution, Resolution 2847. Now, the law has actually been in effect for a little while, but it originally only affected Americans who had assets overseas. Now it's going to affect all banks who deal with U.S. dollars, which is most of the banks in the world. And he believes this is going to drive people away from the U.S. dollar and to persuade them further to go ahead and uh, drop the dollar and to go to something else. But because he doesn't understand biblical prophecy, he doesn't understand that that's not the only thing this will do. Now, if you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to go to the book of Revelation. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 13. And in Revelation chapter 13, I'm going to read something about the upcoming beast power. So Revelation 13, and I'm going to start reading in verse uh, 16. It says, He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, 
free and slave, to receive a mark on the right hand or on their forehead, that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who understand calculate the number of the beast. For the number of a man, his number is 666. Now what has this got to do with all of this? Well, what many people do not realize is that the United States has been imposing through its regulations, through its position as the primary reserve currency of the world, the ability or the requirement to start to track financial transactions to a depth that has not been done in the past. Now, so this means that what the United States is doing through FACTA and other things, it's going to set up for the rise of the beast power. But what, is, what about the United States itself? He says the ramifications are enormous. It means more and more U.S. more and more institutions throughout the world are going to move away from the U.S. dollar, already accelerating the trend to move away from the dollar's reserve currency. He says eventually he believes it's going to be uh, difficult, not impossible, if the average American gets his money out of U.S. dollars into more stable currencies or in foreign banks. He's. Um, as I mentioned before, I believe rules like FACTA that the United States is doing are going to be major factors in controlling buying and selling. The rest of the world is starting to realize the United States dollar cannot possibly remain the world's reserve currency unless the U.S. changes dramatically for the better. And I'm not banking on uh, that the United States doing that. Now, Porter Stansberry, being a financial kind of guy, puts up some charts where he believes that being involved in certain commodities are helpful. Uh, he explains that things such as uh, gold and silver have gone up most years, although they went down in, I think, 2013, but they've gone up in 2014. And his solution is not turning to God. Actually, I'll hold this chart up for just a moment. His solution is to tell people that they ought to invest in farmland as well as gold and silver and things such as that. And while uh, there may be, for, there will be for some time some value in things such as gold and silver, as far as farmland goes, if he thinks owning farmland in the United States is going to be the solution, uh, that's really not going to be the case. Now many of you will feel that the United States must continue and you'll ignore what's going on. Again, Porter Stansbury is coming from a secular source. Other secular sources are looking at the United States and seeing that there are real problems. As far as his farmland solution, though, I'd like you to go to the book of Daniel. Go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11, and I'm going to read verse 39. Daniel 11, verse 39. I'd like to read this particular prophecy because a lot of people have questioned whether or not the United States is actually mentioned in the Bible. Various Protestants have said that uh, by the time Jesus returns, uh, the United States is not mentioned. Well, that's true, except it is mentioned before. Uh, the United States as it currently basically is. You go to Daniel chapter 11, verse 39. We read about one called the king of the north, and we're going to find out what he's going to do. Verse 39. Thus he, the king of the north, shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god which he shall acknowledge and advance his glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. The king of the north is going against the strongest fortresses. Well, who has the strongest fortresses? Who's got the strongest military in the world? The United States. This is an end-time prophecy for the United States. Now, those of you who think owning American farmland is going to be a solution, which is what Porter Stansbury seems to suggest, notice it says he's going to divide the land for gain. So those of you who are holding on to land, that's not going to continue. Now, why would God allow this? Well, God is going to allow this because of sins and hypocrisy of the United States. I'm not going to turn there, but in the Old King James Version, of the Bible in Isaiah chapter 10, it talks about Assyria is going to be, a sent, going to be sent against a hypocritical nation, and I believe the United States is hypocritical. Now, I mentioned that the United States has increased its debt. The United States has had these programs such as quantitative easing. Now, some might say, wait, aren't the politicians saying that the deficit is going down? Well, when they say that, they're talking about an annual deficit being less than perhaps one prior. But the total debt for the United States continues to rise year after year after year. Because of its position as the world's reserve currency, the United States has made what would be called dishonest profits. And that's warned about, actually, in the book of Ezekiel. 
Go to Ezekiel chapter 22. You might want to follow along with me. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Behold, this is verse 13 of Ezekiel 22. Behold, therefore, I beat my fist at the dishonest profit you have made, and at the bloodshed which has been in your midst. Can your heart endure, or can your hands remain strong in the days when I shall deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken and will do it. I will scatter you among the nations, disperse you throughout the countries, and remove your filthiness completely from you. You shall defile yourselves no more in the sight of the nations, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So we see a prophecy here that those who uh, who's make dishonest prophets are not going to continue. Now, Porter Stansbury isn't tying this into uh, that. He's just tying into the fact that if the United States keeps doing what it's doing with its dollar, this is bad. He's not tied it into to biblical prophecy. Now, how is the United States going to go? Or how can it go? Well, one part that Porter Sandsbury does have right, he makes it sound like there could be a sudden collapse. As I mentioned before, Habakkuk 2, verses 6 through 8, talk about a financial collapse at the end. But it's not the only collapse. And he didn't go into the utter total collapse. The collapse he was referring to was more of a massive economic one, but not more serious than that. Well, it's going to be much more serious than that. If you take your Bibles, go to Isaiah chapter 30. I'd like to read starting verse 12 of Isaiah 30. Therefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you despise my word and trust in oppression and perversity and rely on them, therefore this iniquity shall be to you like a breach ready to fall, a bulge in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant. Are we not seeing increase of acceptance of perversity in the United States? More sexual immorality. Perversity is rising up. Sudden destruction is going to come. If you're already in Isaiah, I'd like to go to Isaiah 29. And I'm going to read verse 5 and 6. Because a lot of people think things can't happen to the United States, but that's not true. Isaiah 29, verse 5. Moreover, the multitude of your foes shall be like fine dust, and the multitude of your terrible ones like chaff that passes away. Yes, it shall be in an instant, suddenly. You shall be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake, and with great noise, with storm and tempest, and the flame of a devouring fire. What this is saying is, there's going to be a combination of things that are going to affect the United States. The United States is the most indebted nation the world has ever seen. And the Bible has a warning about the one who gets the pledges in the end times. The Bible warns about those who provide, uh, trust in perversity, and the United States is doing that. The Bible warns about those who increase iniquity, the United States is doing that. The Bible also says a bunch of foes are going to get together, plus there's going to be weather problems, storms, earthquakes. Major things are going to hit. The so-called perfect storm, and that's when, I believe, the United States will be taken over. The Bible tells about a time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. This is going to affect the United States as well as its Anglo-Saxon uh, allies, such as uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, and that would also include uh, Wales, uh, Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland most likely, and probably the Falkland Islands and other such places. While your nation probably will not repent, you can. Don't wait until it's too late. Porter Stansbury correctly suggested that problems are going to come to the United States. He's also suggested, by the way, because of the currency manipulation, the time will come where the government will no longer be able to control the interest rates. And if interest rates get back to, to normal levels or historically normal levels, this in itself will bankrupt the United States. If you look at uh, financial history, you can see that hyperinflation affected Hungary, Germany, uh, and other parts of the world. And this, this can affect the United States. This combined with the sins and Bible prophecy shows that the time will be coming for the end of America. Not just from the fact of regulations that went to effect in 2014 or in parts of 2014, but from the fact that the United States continues to increase its debt continues to rely on perversity, and will not turn to God. Hopefully you will do so. This is Dr. Bob Teal with the Bible News Prophecy Channel.